Good morning, Sage Street Bobcats, and welcome to this kickoff episode of The Sage. I'm Christopher Kathman, your broadcast editor-in-chief. And I'm Bella Eames, your web editor-in-chief. We are both so happy to be such a big part of our campus this year and can't wait to share all the stories of our Sage Creek students. And keep you updated on all that's going on in our community. <laughs> everyone's mind right now is this global pandemic. Yep, this year's news and feature editor, sophomore Madeline Mack, is here to give us some more information regarding our case numbers and reopening plans. Madeline? Thanks, Bella and Chris. California currently has the most COVID cases of any state. San Diego County has 38,365 cases of COVID-19 and 682 deaths in total due to the virus ranking us the fifth highest of all California counties. San Diego County was removed from the COVID watch list on Tuesday, August 18th, and has remained off the list for over 14 days, allowing schools to legally put together a reopening plan that aligns with county guidelines. Governor Gavin Newsom released a new reopening plan Friday, August 28th, that loosens some restrictions for all of California, depending on each county's number of COVID cases, and was put into effect Monday, August 31st. The plan includes the following adjustments. Begin indoor restaurant seating at 25% capacity. Indoor worship at 25% capacity. And indoor nail salons and barber shops can reopen. This plan was looked over by our county health supervisor, who has said all retail businesses will be restricted to 50% capacity. Regardless of the outcome of this period, SCHS co has committed to online learning until at least October 9th, when they will reevaluate the situation. For now, the CDC continues to recommend that everyone wash their hands often, stay at least six feet apart from anyone outside their household, wear a mask around others, and stay home when possible. Let's get through this together, Bobcats. This has been Madeline Mack, sending it back to the anchors. Thank you, Madeline. It's amazing to see our state slowly reopening. It definitely is. This week I just got my nails done, my hair done, my car, my, my Chris. car. I, I got my computer. Chris. Okay. Alrighty then. So next up, we have our sports editors for this year, junior Cooper Hancock and sophomore Nick Sepek with an update on Sage Creek's plans for athletics this year. Good morning, Bobcats. I'm Cooper Hancock. And I'm Nick Sepek. And we are your sports editors for the Sage this year. This week, we spoke with the athletic director, Mrs. Williams, to ask how sports will return to Sage Creek and how they may be affected by COVID-19. So when will sports return to Sage Creek? Um, well, on August 14th, the San Diego section for CIF had, um, released the revised master calendar for sports. Um, and so what they've decided to do for sports um, in our area is postpone the season until December, um, giving us a chance to make sure that the health order allows for sports. And so what that's gonna look like is instead of three seasons like we typically have, we're gonna have two seasons. Uh, we're going to start with what they call a fall season, which will start in December. December 12th is when most sports at our school will start. Um, and that will include cross country, field hockey, and boys and girls volleyball. So boys volleyball is being moved from what was typically a spring sport into that first fall winter season. Um, and that season will run until like the end of February, possibly middle of March. Um, and then we will start a second season, which we'll call the, they're calling the spring season. And that will have the rest of our sports. So for Sage Creek, that's going to be boys and girls um, golf, boys and girls tennis, which is now going to be considered a co-ed team, uh, track and field, swim, softball, baseball, boys and girls lacrosse, boys and girls soccer, boys and girls basketball, um, as, as well as wrestling. So all the rest of the sports we offer at Sage Creek will be in that last season. Um, some of them will start in February, mid-February to late February, and the rest will start mid-March, and they'll run through May, um, some lasting all the way through the end of June. So um, that's the difference that we're looking at, and we're hoping that that will allow for everything to kind of settle down and get us back into school, get kids back on campus as best we can so we can allow for athletics, um, and give us the best um, opportunity to have two full seasons 
of play. Um, and then how will sports, um, how will they return to Sage Creek? Um, we are and have been working on a return to play um, policy and protocol with the district uh, that goes with what CIF has given us as far as their guidelines, as well as our county health order, uh, as well as our district reopening plans that they have for students. Will there be changes to athletics? Yes, there will be some changes. Um, what those are, I don't know exactly what they will be. Um, it'll be kind of along the same lines as the changes we see in just our school day. So those will be continuing into after school athletics. Um, you know, there's been talk of possibly limiting maybe the spectators, um, having smaller groups practice at one time um, and all kinds of different things. Nothing has been set yet, but we will definitely be taking um, the health order and the district guidelines into consideration when we make our plans for reopening and communicating that with, with our athletes and our parents. And, oh, and what would I like students to know? Um, well, first of all, I want my student athletes and all, all students at Sage Creek to stay safe during this time. Um, the best thing we can be doing is, you know, listening to all the health protocols, following all the, the guidelines to keep us and our families safe so that we can return to school and we can return to athletics. Um, also, I would encourage them to stay active. You know, we've been out of athletics for a long time. Um, some club sports are back in session and some are not. Um, but the best thing athletes can be doing for themselves right now is keeping up on their schoolwork, keeping their grades up, staying active, staying healthy. Um, that's really important right now. And then also just, um, I would like them to know that um, while we're not having athletics, um, we do have a virtual athletic office and you can check that out through the website and I am doing office hours. So if anyone has a question, um, of course you can always email me, but also um, wanna talk or have a you know concern or something you wanna bring up, um, please join me in my office hours. They're typically on Wednesdays from 9.30 to 10.30. Um, but if that doesn't work, of course, please email me and we'll set up a time to do it at a different time that's, that's more appropriate or more convenient. Um, and then also just kind of with the thing is, athletics are gonna look a little different this year. And um, just asking for everyone's patience um, and understanding and just remembering that, you know, we're just excited to get back, to get back to playing, get back to being with our teammates and being at school. Um, and so our biggest thing this year, our goal this year is just to get back to being a community um, and being back in the court, on the field and, and, and in the pool or wherever we happen to be playing our sports. So um, that's kind of it for me, but I do appreciate this opportunity to share this information with our community. So thank you very much for the interview. It is so hard for some of our athletes to choose between two sports. It is definitely going to be an interesting season for our athletes, but hopefully they'll be able to get back on the field soon. I agree 100%. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today, Bobcats. We ex are so excited to see you guys, whether it be in person or virtually. Make sure to head over to thesagenews.com for all news stories, and make sure to follow at the Sage Publication on Instagram and Twitter for polls, behind-the-scenes posts, and much more. Thank you so much for watching, Bobcats. This has been Bella Neems. And Christopher Kathman reporting for The, the Sage. Sage.